Hello, Mr. Dhruv Subramanian. Hello. I just read your story about uh, the Homo Aispos and, uh, and the tree aliens. Yeah. Uh, and I wanted to ask you some questions about how you thought of uh, certain things. So can you tell me a little bit about uh, the two planets that you talk about in your story? The planet where they live in is called Lacusan. Okay. And it's a temperate and snowy planet and it's a rocky planet. I see. Okay. And what about where the Wactodus live? Live in a desert-like and hot, and some ice boxes where the lactodus grow. Oh, they grow in the ice boxes. I see. Okay. Yeah. And inside those, between those ice boxes, there's a crevasse with fire coming out of it. I see. All right. What's a crevasse? A crevasse is something between a glacier or Two ice cubes. I see. Can you spell the crevasse? The C -R -E -V -A -S -S -E. word? C-R-E-V-A-S-S-E-S. Crevasses. I see. Okay. And what's that planet called? Plato. And uh, can you tell me a little more about where in the universe uh, Lacufa and uh, Plato are found? Lacufa uh, huh. is found 3,500 light years away. I see. From Earth. Uh huh. And Plato is found 400 light years away from our solar system. I see. Got it. Do they have scientific names that you made up? Yeah. Huh. Lacufa hmm. is 9273AV2. And how did you come up with those names? Did you just pull them up out of thin air? Yeah. You did? Okay. I see. All right. All right. Uh, and uh, I noticed something really interesting here. I liked that you had compared the ice boxes in Plato to uh, Lake Baikal. Can you tell me what that is all about? Lake Baikal is the hmm. deepest lake in the whole world. Okay. And where is it? Russia. And uh, how did you compare the two? Why do you think that these l ice boxes are like uh, the ice in Lake Baikal? Because hmm. they have turquoise ice between it. Like in Lake it. Baikal? Yeah. Cool. And where did you learn about this information? In a video. In YouTube? Yeah. Ah, I see. Um, all right, cool. Tell me more about the whack to dos um, I noticed that you have your own special spelling for that word. How are we supposed to spell whack to dos W A K T U D O O. I see. And uh, what are these whack to dos Are they, they, they animals like, or plants or? They're plants, huh. and they look like beetle fly traps. Do they, they eat flies then? No, they eat insects and people. Wow, they must be much bigger than uh, the Earth's Venus flytraps then, are they? Yeah, they are 10 feet tall. They are 10 feet tall. And, and they have a lifespan oh. about 73 years old. Really? They have 73 years of life lifespan. Oh, okay. And how do they catch people and eat them? They shoot them with radioactive elements huh. and then they eat them up inside their core. I see. Okay. And uh, what kind of radioactive elements are you talking about? In the periodic table, niobium and technetium. Technetium and niobium. So you like talking about the period, learning about the periodic table? Yeah. Okay. Do you know about atomic numbers? Yeah. What, uh, so niobium and technetium, can you tell me the atomic number for niobium? 41. And technetium? 43. And these are the two elements found inside uh, um, the Vactodus? Yeah. And that's how they kill the people, is it? Yeah. I see. Do they have like sharp prickles like Venus flytraps? Um, yeah, they have some hair. They have some hair, okay. And is that where they trap the humans? Yeah. And are the humans there, like humans in the earth, are they homo sapiens too? No. No. homo iceboats. Okay, and is that a new species that you made up? Yeah. And okay, uh, how did they evolve? From homo neanderthals without stopping at homo sapiens, and they, then they went right into 
I see. So you like uh, to learn about ev evolution as well. Yeah. Can you tell me all the time periods of uh, human history in our in our evolution cycle? Ardipithecus, huh. Australopithecus, Homo habilis, Homo ergaster, Homo erectus, Homo heidelbergensis, Homo neanderthalensis, Homo sapiens. Cool. And which ones do we belong to? Homo sapiens. I see. How did Ardipithecus is it and our Australopithecus? How did they both look? Like a monkey. They look like monkeys. I see. And let me read out what you wrote here. If you want to see something about evolution, look in dark caves, look in museums, look in Japanese museums, and look in books. Japanese museums. Why did you write that? Did you see them in a Japanese museum? I saw them in Mirai. What is Mirai Khan? A Japanese museum. Did you go to Japan recently? No. Hmm. Only last month. Well, that is recent enough. First of all, tell me how do you spell Homo, I suppose? H O M O I S P O S. I see. And this is a new species you made up? Yeah. And uh, how are they different from Homo sapiens? Well, they are half human, half dragon. Half dragon? Yeah. What can they do? They breathe fire, I see. And then what else can they do? I see you've written something about more elements in their body. They can do some funny tricks with it. Can you tell me more about the tricks they can do? They could put their hand on their heart and then breathe fire, then they could light up their light bulbs. How do they light up their light bulbs? Through. Uh, what do they have inside that makes them? Is it like an Iron Man chest uh, battery or something? No. What do they have there? Argon and xenon, more elements. Can you tell me the atomic number for argon? 18. And the chemical symbol? ER. And xenon? XE? Huh. 54. I see. Okay. And what? Uh, why does argon and xenon help them? There's, they are glowing gases. I see. And they help them light up their light bulbs? I see. All right. And what about the breathing fire trick? How are they able to do that? They have sulfur in their body. And sulfur helps them uh, breathe out fire. Yeah. I did want to ask you a few more questions about the periodic table. Can we do that? Yeah. Cool. Can I have a quiz with you? Yeah. Would you like me to ask you about symbols or... Uh, atomic numbers. Atomic numbers. Okay. Atomic numbers. How many elements are there in the periodic table? 118. 118. Okay. And I can pick any number and you'll tell me what uh, element it is? Yeah. Okay, 74. Tungsten. Can you tell me what it's used for? Used for light bulbs and a filament. I right, cool. Um, eight. Oxygen. What's it used it for? Breathe. Very good. Uh, 17. 17. Chlorine. Hmm. Used for swimming pool. What do they do with it in the swimming pool? Swim back to Excellent. Very nice. Um, so tell me something about 20. 20 calcium. Makes you grow bones. Grow bones, wow. Um, what about uh, 70? 70. Mm-hmm. Euterbium. Useful cookware. I see. The YB cookware. The YB cookware is a famous company. All right, all right. And uh, do you remember where it's named after, Euterbium? Euterbium. And what is Euterbium? A city in Sweden. Ah, I see. A city in Sweden. And did they find Euterbium over there? Combined with terbium, erbium, and yttrium. They found all three elements over there, right? Yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, can you tell me uh, the names of some elements that are um, liquid under room temperature? Gallium, huh. cesium, um, gallium, cesium. That's good enough. Uh, tell me a couple that are radioactive. What are they, uh, what is cesium used for? Cesium is used for atomic clocks. Okay, and what is uh, uh, chromium used for? Corrosion resistant. I see, okay. Uh, tell me uh, the atomic number for Einsteinium. 99. Wonderful. And tell me, what does synthetically prepared element mean? Means huh. it's prepared in the lab. That means I cannot find it uh, on the road? You can't find it in nature. I can't find it in nature. Excellent. I see. Can you give me an example of a synthetically prepared element? Technesium. 
technetium I see. Okay, all right. I see you have a team of astronauts here. Do you like to learn about space? Yeah! What did you, I, I, and I, I remember you, um, you were an astronaut yourself for Halloween, weren't you? Yeah! Did you, do you still have that costume? Do you like to wear it? Master bedroom, yeah, I like to wear it. Do you want to be an astronaut when you grow up? Yeah. What do you want? Where do you want to go when you become an astronaut? To these planets. To these planets? Cool. Are they? Huh? Ah, I bet you'll find something similar then, right? Oh, I also noticed one more thing. Your, your, um, the astronaut's mission's name is Aphrodite. Where did you pick up that name? Who is Aphrodite? Is the it your mummy? Love is a god of love in Greek. In Greek mythology, I see. Have you learned a lot about Greek mythology, yeah. Greek myths? Yeah. Which is your favorite Greek myth? Theseus and the Minotaur. Who's the Minotaur? A bad person. Huh. Is he like a human being? Half bull and half man. He, is he the villain of the story? Yeah. And you find him interesting? Yeah. I see. Where does he live? Do you remember? In the middle of a... In the middle of the island Crete. In the island Crete, of course. And the, there's a very convoluted pathway to reach him. What is that called? Labyrinth. The labyrinth, yeah. All right, cool. Um, so what do you like about your Homo Ispo story? Uh, and the Back to Do story. What did you find most interesting? The poop comes out of fire. The poop comes out of, of whom? Of the Homo Ispo. The homo, I suppose, poop comes out as fire. Really? What is that used for? Is that a useful thing for them to have? Yeah. Or is it just something funny you made up? Useful thing to have. Why do you think yeah. it was useful? Huh? Their tushies can be cozy. Really? I see. Why are they living in a really cold area? Yeah. And they need it for, to be cool, uh, warmed up? Yeah. I see. They're, they're living in the snowy areas in the lack of fat. And I also heard you made up your own um, song for it. What kind of song was it? The Lakufas National Anthem. Did you may have composed your own song? Yeah. Is it something you made up? Yeah. Cool. All right. Awesome. I had a great time chatting with you. Did you have a good time writing the story? Yeah. And uh, what are you working on now, now that the story is complete? Illustrations. Illustrations. Are you having fun painting them out? Yeah. Cool. All right. Thanks so much, Dhruvo. Bye.